Danny Baker's Breakfast Show. Weekday mornings from 6. Danny Baker on BBC London 94.9. English as tuppence and changing, yet changeless as canal water. Armoured and defeat, nestling in green nowhere. Miss have a shambling, feudal still. Opsimath and Eremite, bold flag bearer. The BBC London 94.9 breakfast show. Good morning, everybody. Uh, you know, the, the, we're no good at keeping secrets, which is why we both win awards and resign on the same I'm day, the you same know. Day. And, and, and unfortunately, uh, <coughs> we, uh, we, what we should have done is uh, let the tension build. Uh, as Hitler used to, and uh, and allow our guest to come on the air in f the full. I know, I know. The, 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 I could have picked up perhaps a less clumsy reference. Yes, but I couldn't think of a theatrical uh, equivalent. So, uh, but Le Leonard Nimoy is good enough to be with us this morning, and he's uh, here to promote. What? Why are we all gathered this morning? Uh, I'm Leonard appearing this weekend at XL. Okay, XL. Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, and that's uh, uh, you're going to be promoting what? How? What are you going to be Royal doing? Royal Victoria Dock. Uh -huh, the Royal Victoria Dock. You said with a question right mark. So oh, you are absolutely yes. on the. Money with that. Too. Too now. We're there, dude. It's the London Movie Comic Media Expo. Yeah, and the Royal Victoria Dock, of course. That's like yeah. saying Times Square around here. Absolutely, everyone knows that. And what, do you, what is the, uh, requested of you at these kind of gatherings, Leonard? You know, what, what a very strong right hand to sign a lot of autographs. <laughs> and, and is it keep it moving, or do people want long, <laughs> long explanations? I, I, I really, I haven't had an experience with this one yet. I'll, I'll find out this yeah. weekend. I'll, I'll let you know on Monday. I'll bet. You know, I'll bet. I and promise. Uh, uh, I promise we're not going to go down this avenue too hard, but I'll bet people quote lines from the show, as we must call Please it. Please sign you. this to Mary, live long and prosper from your, from your, <laughs> for your biggest fan. <laughs> Mary, Johannes, yeah, yeah, and, 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 and good pro that you are. Coming from Liverpool yeah. all the way to see you, Mr. Nimoy, Science Park. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and occasionally, I suspect, they give you lines of dialogue from an episode that you, you can barely remember and say, they do. you remember when you said that? They do. And you, and you good pro that I you say, are. Of course I do. <laughs> of course you do. Well, it's, uh, <laughs> so I'm you, glad that you do, too. Uh, this is this Sunday, is it? It's this Sunday. Is that Saturday, right? Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Well, welcome aboard. You, you Thank should, you. You should enjoy this. Thank uh, you. How, how long has it taken... Um, if this is the right word, I want to become, you know, reconciled. Okay, th that's it. The, 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 the Spock thing is an honor and a tribute. It was never, the, never goes away. Was there, was there a period when you tried to, you know, say, I, I wasn't in the Beatles, so to no. speak? <laughs> you know, no, that's the kind of thing, you know, they, everyone goes through no, that. No, we had a period of time um, a long time ago, 30 years ago, really, the mid-70s, when... There was no Star Trek production. Uh -huh. For an 11-year period, we made no Star Trek product. No, absolutely. And People during that, that period of time, Star Trek was extremely popular, and there was a demand for the product. Yeah. Uh, I was constantly being asked questions about Star Trek, but mm -hmm. there was no Star Trek work to do, so that was frustrating. Yeah. And, and, and uh, people forget, it was just a two series originally, I believe, yeah? We did uh, three three seasons. The three seasons, okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, was there a down period? Was there ever a period? Was there an immediate period after that? Were you uh, thinking, well, that's that, and I'll never hear from that again for yes. the year after? Yes, yeah? immediately after I'd finished three seasons of Star Trek, I went to work on Mission Impossible for three years, but nobody ever talks about that. Well, let's talk about that's, that. No, How was Mission no, Impossible? No, no, How was Mission Impossible? No, please. <laughs> well, I've, I would like to. I'd like to keep you entertained while you're here, and not perhaps uh, uh, troll the lake for the usual suspects. Uh, uh, so how was Mission Impossible? I had a very good time for a while. I was doing a lot of different characters. I replaced a very good actor. Martin Landau had, had originated this role of, of man. Of course, yeah. He does other, other people, other impersonations of other people. Yeah. And uh, he left the show for various reasons, and I replaced him. And it was very challenging because I got to do Asian people. I got to do South American people and Euro European people, uh -huh. blind people and deaf people and lame well, that's people. that's cool. Uh -huh. And then the second season, they asked me to do Asian people and South American people and European <laughs> people and black people and lame people again. I got bored and I left. Yeah, yeah. But you've always worked, I take it, uh, to say the least. But then um, pre-Star Trek, were you... Pre-Star Trek was difficult. I had 15 years of jobbing around where I never had a job that lasted longer than two weeks. I was constantly looking for work. And I, I had a family. I was supporting myself doing a lot of other kinds of work. Was there pressure on you to, you know, go, go get a get a job, so to speak? Go to work, sure. Yeah, yeah. Sure, always. Yeah. And, and, and was there ever times when you thought that's what I should do? Uh, yes, yes. I, I, would, I, I went through some periods where I thought I'm wasting my time, and this is too frustrating. If I'd chosen any other career, I'd be, I'd be managing a department store by yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and did, we, did you ever come close uh, before Star Trek to the, the big one? Were you ever up for any pretty jobs that you were on the last no, callback for? No, no, no. Actually, the the answer is, frankly, no. I had never come close to anything major. I, I was always a, a supporting player. Uh -huh. An occasional guest star, but usually a supporting player. Uh, and what Second or third man through the door.
door, they used to call them. Okay, yeah, spear holders, they call yeah, them over right. here. Yeah, uh, and, and why was that, do you suspect? I, mean, I think it was a, a, the nature of, of um, the period in which we're, the, that we're discussing, which was a period in which... Uh, uh, good-looking guys that lived next door were the kind of people they were looking for. Yeah, and I was not that type. I was I was off, so I'm considered offbeat, yeah, huh? uh, ethnic-looking, and so forth. And uh, my eyes were too small, my nose a little too crooked, my hair not quite right, and the wrong <laughs> color. And, yeah, but that, that, and I hadn't kind of come into myself. I was, uh, I, I I I always thought that I was too young for yeah. the, the look that I needed to actually and, be, and, be and, useful. And had you found a style? I mean, did you did you have a recognizable style? I was a very serious character. Actor, actor. I yeah. tried very hard to find to find special um, things to do in each performance that that, that would have to do with the character that I was hired to play. Sure. And who were your peers, Linda? Did did, did, uh, did you have pals who did break big at the time? Yeah, Robert Vaughn. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, he was one of my colleagues. I was just watching him Earl the other day. Holliman, Earl Holloman and I were I was, in school I was, together. I was watching Robert the other day, and I was a teenage caveman. So oh it, really? It, it wasn't all valor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did you start out acting? I know you grew up in Boston. Oh, I started Is that when right? I was eight years old. I was on stage when I was eight years old in a little theater in Boston. Uh -huh. Playing Hansel in Hansel and Gretel, and oh. it just I, I just <laughs> fell into it. People said, "Can you say this line or sing this song?" And I did. And the next thing I knew, I was on stage. Uh -huh. And but I, when I was about seventeen or eighteen, I, I really fell in love with it. And, just, and did your parents encourage you? No, no, no. On the contrary, no. My parents were <laughs> Russian emigres yeah. who came to the United States so that their children could become professional people, not, yeah. not vagrants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you had that whole conversation. You're a bum. You're a bum. You're yeah. That, did you? <laughs> be hanging around with gypsies and vagrants. My father said when I said I wanted to be an actor. I like, well, no, 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 don't have it right, Dad. Uh -huh. that's, that's the old country. That's not the way it should be here. Uh, and what would be the first uh, recorded uh, uh, instance of your work? What was the first time you went on tape? I had a very important job in a what, what we used to call a serial, these Saturday afternoon yeah, serials. Sure, yeah. We played 15 minutes each week with a uh -huh. cliffhanger at the end. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, the yeah. hero or heroine is in terrible trouble. Come back next week and yeah. see what happens. And I was in one of those, and it was a very important show. I thought it would, I thought it would rocket me to start them. It was called Zombies of the Stratosphere. <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad it was. <laughs> and I was one. I was one. Oh, you were? Yeah, one of four that came from Mars. We stole a pickup truck and a revolver, a, a, a 38 caliber revolver. I'm going to take over Earth. <laughs> why can, are you laughing? You know, you know why I'm laughing? Why are you because, laughing? Because I can see Mum and Pop sitting either side of you. You said, this is it? And slowly turning their heads towards you. Know, left we left the old country for this. <laughs> <laughs> Zombies right. of the Stratus. And does it exist? Has it ever been you know, found and played to? It's around. It's oh, around. No, it, it, it's, in fact, it's been colorized. Oh, has it? Oh, yeah. oh I, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Bless you. Great old, uh, Republic. Uh, That's right, series. Republic There's Pictures, the, exactly. We, we, Good oh, for you. Oh, no, no, no. Yes. There was just stuff around Yes, there, right? Republic uh, Pictures. Uh -huh. and, 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 and again, you, you're playing that, and it's work, you know. I can't imagine you could retire. I was it. happy to get it. Yeah, yeah. Happy and, to get it. And, and, and what about, uh, say, we had, you said you never were up for any major roles, but there were whiffs of the big time. When was the first time you were on Broadway, for example? Did you ever get as far as I that? was on Broadway only uh, much later, in the 1970s, after Star Trek and Mission Impossible. I, I was on Broadway twice, once uh, in a... Uh, in a play directed by Otto Preminger, which we need not discuss. Oh, again, well, no, no, we can discuss uh, Otto Preminger. How was that? Oh, oh, How was oh, the great man? Oh, that was difficult. Yeah? Was difficult. But four years later, I was in Equus. I was the final Oh, okay. to die well, in Equus. On well done. Yeah. Okay, well, but perhaps we, we may just return to Mr. Preminger, because he's, he's a good touchstone of this show. We enjoy his work a lot. Uh, Myra Breckenridge is a particular famous, I think, of uh, oh, Amos. Oh, yeah? <laughs> When we return, we'll be right <laughs> We're back. Uh, Leonard Nimoy is uh, good enough to be with us. Um, and I am saying that entirely uh, correctly, am I there, Leonard? Because of uh, uh, very... I have always pronounced it Nimoy, but Nimoy. you pronounce it the way my brother does. So it's all right. You're, you're, you're in... And, and uh, your brother, what does he do? Good company. My brother's a retired chemical engineer. And so, they, so, so oh, I know who the favoured son was That's now. right. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't you be more like your brother? <laughs> oh, I see. So, uh, uh, and, 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 he set a terrible example. He went through all, his, all the schooling, all the great yeah. grades. He went to Ma MIT, Master Institute yeah. of Technology. He got a master's degree in engineering. Oh, and I yeah. come along and said, I'm going to be an actor. <laughs> <laughs> in Zombies from the I did all indeed. Give me my cat and cane and I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> so when did it happen? And it's a story I'm sure 
sure you've told a million times, but the day you went along and you went up for this role in, a, in this, uh, yeah, but by now Robert Vaughn's a big shot. He's man from Uncle. You're furious. Yes. Uh, and so, and you went along. What you got? Well, I was doing. I was doing all right. I was. I was doing okay. I was getting some decent, uh, smaller roles, not many leads, but I was doing all right. I was making uh, making an impression in the town. I was sort of in the labor pool, uh-huh. and some people knew who I was. And then I got a call. My agent called me and said, "You're going to do this role in a, in a TV show called The Lieutenant." And I was I had a nice role to play, and I had a lot of fun with it. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, Gary Lockwood was the lead, playing a, a, a lieutenant in the in the Marine Corps. Okay. And uh, and I had fun on the job. And then a couple of weeks later, my agent called me and said, "The producer of that show wants to talk to you about a science fiction series. He's going to he's, uh-huh. he's going to do a pilot." Uh-huh. Well, when you hear that kind of conversation after so many years of, of uh-huh. the kind of jobbing around that I had done, you take it all with a grain of salt. And you think, well, maybe he'll call me, maybe he won't, maybe he'll make the pilot, maybe he won't, maybe it'll sell, maybe it won't. So there's sure. so many maybe before anything comes of this. Let's not get excited. But he called me and asked for a meeting, and I thought, well, this will be the audition. And I went to see him, and I discovered after a few minutes he was actually trying to talk me into doing the job. I thought, this man must be out of his mind. Uh-huh. You know, don't have to talk me into it. <laughs> Just tell yeah. me where to show up, and I'll be there. <laughs> and, 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 and it was a fait accompli by then, or was it still just a pilot, yeah? It was a pilot. Okay. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, we made one that did not sell the series. I don't know if you're aware of that. No, I didn't. I didn't Jeffrey know Jeffrey Hunter was the original captain. Oh, no, I didn't. That I've heard. That yeah. I have heard. Yeah. Okay. It was, a, it was a very interesting pilot, a, a very complicated a, a re- too intellectual, they said. Yeah. And not accessible for a mass audience. Okay. About a year later, they decided to try again, and I was I was brought back. A year part. later. About a year later. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and and when you you know you first got your lines through and you're looking at it, I mean, was there ever, I don't know, a, 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 an Irish Spock, a Russian uh, Spock? How, did, did no. you Did you ever Did you look at it straight away and think, Yeah, I got that? Or did you Did you try him with a limp? Well, how did, did you, <laughs> was, was there another one? Was there one behind the bedroom door we never saw? No, no, not really. It took a little while to for the character to really evolve which happens on any series because the, the writers have to see how yeah. you, what the chemistry is with you and the other, the other characters and, and what, what, what pieces of work they give you to do that, that are successful and which aren't, and they become sure. more selective about but, how to do But was that you. stillness always there? Because he's very still, you know, the hands behind the back. Was the, That must have been you. Just playing, yes. So I'm not going to... He's not an excitable guy, obviously. But it was that's... given that he was... What was interesting to me and challenging right off right off the bat was well, it was given that he was half human, half Vulcan. Yeah. Had a, human mother, and that he wanted to live as a Vulcan, which was um, uh, operating purely on logic and suppressing all emotion. Yeah. So that gave me a dynamic to work with sure. immediately, yeah. because the, the suppressing of emotion can can give you an interior life that makes you interesting. You yeah, but it's to say, it is, it's, it's a, uh, I mean, uh, it's to say scene stealing is a phrase that, that, that diminishes it. But I it, stole you, any scene I could get. Oh, you had, you had your best show burgling clothes any on, I know. Any chance yeah. I got. <laughs> but the, the, everyone's rushing around, and of course, you know, the effects are uh, such as they were, but there was this guy, the stillness about it, which really I think was the, uh, you know, if, if William Shatner, forgive me, the core of it, or it always was. No, it was. You're right. There, there was, there was that, and and uh, and the eye went to that character because there was always something yeah. interior going on. That's, that's right. It was almost like the Sherlock Holmes thing, whereby you know, let the story go on around you, and then you yeah. come up and say, by right. the way, this is what it's all been about. Exactly. Yeah, there was exactly. a lot of that. Yeah. But anyway, as we say, just the three series. Then, uh, as a matter of fact, I played Sherlock Holmes some time later. You're kidding. In the Royal Shakespeare production. Of what? what was uh, it one? was called Sherlock Holmes, the original William Gillette uh, uh, play. And I toured the entire that United a, States. That Georgia. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of yeah. sense. And I don't, I don't realize Strangely enough, I played it just like Spock. <laughs> 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 and of course, the flaps were on the hat point, <laughs> but there you go. And, uh, now, is it right, just going back to your, um, your parents for a second, is it right that your dad had a barber shop? Yeah, and that's right. um, and uh, sort of capitalized on your role. He did it's like Charlie by giving uh, Spock haircuts. Yeah, is that right? That's right. Yes, children used to come around and say, "I want a Spock haircut." Got me like Spock. He said, "How come you don't want an industrial chemist haircut?" What right. <laughs> <laughs> you always want the bum. But they, uh, I don't know why I'm playing your dad like that. But, uh, and, and you so, do it very well. <laughs> do it well. Good, huh? The little Jackie Mason. Were you there? <laughs> the, did you know him? The, the, I am playing him like Jackie Mason. Why would I do? That? Uh, and, uh, so uh, when did you? Uh, uh, when did the, uh, the 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 power, if that's that ever uh, arrived? When did you? When you knew? Hang on, we've really got something here. I mean, it was obviously after the series. I mean, you obviously went on to direct and produce things yourself. Very soon after we went on the air, uh, the, the the audience reaction was intense. Yeah, never never gigantic in, in numbers, but uh, but extremely intense audience. Yeah. always uh, right uh, from the beginning. And, yeah. and, and and the day, and yet, let's say the three series. Do you remember the day when you got the call saying, "That's it, they're, they're canceling Star Trek." 
say. Yes. Where I were got you? a call from I was I was at home in Los Angeles. I got a call from one of the vice presidents at NBC and said, Leonard, this is a call that I hate to make. I have to oh. do my job and we're canceling Star Trek. And the reason being? And I said, You're a fool. Yeah. 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 The okay. reason was that the, they. Uh, what were you up against? It was by NBC. The way? You know, I don't remember. But uh, but the fact is, we were up against bad time slots yeah. more than anything else. They put us on at times when the audience they kept moving us from. When, time when did it air in America? Over here, it used to be kind of Thursday nights. Uh, so I remember seven thirty. Oh no, it was after some of the pops and a couple of Saturdays. And it was. We went on the air in September of '66. I think we were on eight o'clock on Thursday night. Uh huh. And then uh, the next season, they put us on an hour earlier or or, or an hour later. I've forgotten which. Sure. And then the third season, they canceled us at the end of the second season. Okay. And then there was this gigantic outcry, and they got 110,000 letters uh -huh. protesting the cancellation. They put us back on for one more season. They put us on Friday night at 10 o'clock, which oh, is a well, date night. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's out. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. And, we, and they predicted we would uh, die, and there was, it was a self-fulfilling prophecy. And, and as you say, so you, you get the call, and it's going to be canceled. And yet, uh, uh, there was this period to say, but before the film, how long was it? And there was no start. 11 right? years. But there was always Star Trek... Uh, in reruns. Yeah, in reruns. That's right. the thing. But from yeah. the original original production ended around 1969, and, and we didn't start making films until around uh, uh, until around 1980. And how much clout did you have when they said we're going to make the movie? Did you say, oh. okay, oh, sweet, look at your face. <laughs> Very sweet. Oh. oh, you're going to make this movie without me, is that... Because <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. you the only cast member to appear in every single episode. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, was the, I was the only one from the original pilot. That was carried over into the second pilot. Right. That's right. So they couldn't do the movies without you. Well, in they any could way. have. They could have. Oh, yeah. Anybody well, can make a mistake. Well, let them try. <laughs> 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 when you were making the series, uh, who else, what, what was the uh, commissary, as you call it, the cafeteria? Like, what other uh, series were being made around you at the same time? Who was on the next stage? Mission Impossible. Okay. Was right on the very next stage. Oh, right. Okay. We both went on the air. Both shows went on the air. Exactly mm -hmm. the same time. But Mission Impossible lasted eight seasons. Uh -huh. So when I was finished on Star Trek after three seasons, I did two seasons on Mission Impossible. Sure. Doesn't and then I left. And to prove that they could do without me, they did three more years without me. <laughs> <laughs> Those words you shouted back at the door didn't actually come true then. Uh, you're through. I'm leaving. That's yeah. it. Yeah, you'll never make a success of this. And so the movies, of course, uh, were like gangbusters and uh, and I dare say are, are with us still. You know, barely a day goes by. I don't say we're some office in Hollywood doesn't say, OK, this is the big one there. We're going to do it. just yeah. one more. Is, yeah. is that the way it works? Well, the first one was the Star Trek motion picture. There yeah, was no intention to do anything more than one. Star Trek the motion picture. Yeah. And uh, it was uh, it was a Ex extravagantly costly large production which did not do terribly well it didn't have a very good script uh -huh. and I thought well that's the end of it they've, they've beached the big whale and uh, and then someone came along with some good ideas about how to make uh, a good Star Trek a second Star Trek film much less expensive but much more interesting because we had a good script uh -huh. and, and, and fun, that was yeah. Spock died I yeah of course yeah that that well, absolutely died. Yeah. of course it did. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And then Resurrection, Star Trek Three, Spock came back. Uh -huh, uh -huh, that's I right. directed that one. And that's right. I, yeah. And, and the direction thing again is there, yeah. was that that must have been great to do to 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 almost like going back to your old school and just uh, demolishing. You know, I had never looked forward to being a director. Often uh, earlier people would say to me, "You should be directing," and I thought, "Well, wait a minute, just a minute. What, is there something wrong with my acting? What's yeah. going yeah, on?" Yeah. Well, well, did they did mildly fight. insulted. Uh -huh. uh, and, and then I thought, "Well, maybe I should do this." And I I, I insisted, as a matter of fact, when they asked me to come and do Star Trek. Three, I said, I want to direct the film. Who's the best director you've ever worked with? Me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. It <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Bang! That, cut, that went straight out of the ground. That did not a second sentence. No, we had some very good directors on the series. A man named Joe Pevney, a man yeah. named Mark Daniels. They did some wonderful episodes. Uh -huh. they, were, they had great theatrical backgrounds, and the show called for theatricality. Uh -huh. And they brought that to the show, and they did very you, good work. You must have a hell of an office uh, in California dealing with the mail from all over the world. What kind of volume is that like? When you, what, what kind of things do you get? Not a lot these days. We, we discourage no? it, frankly. We just Discouraging, yeah. Do you? It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you discourage And that works, does it? <laughs> Get the hint. That, Shut up. That's, that, that rubber stamp you've got with the finger on it, that works, does it? <laughs> but, uh, and, you uh, what I call my autobiography. Yeah. And, 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 <clears> and, <throat> was it, and was it uh, uh, completely uh, uh, globally embraced uh, Star Trek? Are there, what kind of markets? We did not that? get We did not get a market uh, in China, ever that oh. I'm aware of, or the Far East in general. Uh, Japan, a, excuse me. Japan was very big. Very I was going to say, yeah. Uh, yeah here, very big. UK. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. Germany, very big. South America, very big. Uh -huh. um, nothing to speak of in France. And, and uh, is it like the cliche? Can you be in, in, a, in a foreign city and, and, and switch on the TV in the middle of the night? There you are. That can happens. happen. Can happen. Yeah. I was actually working in China uh, about uh, 15, 18 years ago. 
uh, on a TV series and and found my uh, my picture on the front page of the Asian edition of the Wall Street Journal. And I, <laughs> I picked it up in the in the Peking Hotel, oh, the Beijing Hotel. Yeah, and that is the great. that is the kind of celebrity you couldn't have dreamed of when you were a yeah. zombie. Well, the, the, the whole the whole celebrity thing is fascinating. Uh, um, I was at. Uh, I went off to a little college in Montana, a very uh. sparsely populated place. I went to. I accepted a speaking engagement. I thought, well, I'll go here where it's it's going to be quiet, it's going to be uh. serene. I'm getting away from telephones, faxes, emails. Yeah. And I arrived. I landed at the airport. They took me to a small motel where I checked in and got the key. Walked into my room and I was unpacking, and the phone rang. I picked it up and said hello, and I heard, oh, is this Mr. Nemo? I said, yes, it is. Oh, I'm so excited. It's wonderful getting you on the telephone. You have no idea. I said, who are you? She said, my name is Sally. I said, well, Sally, how did you find me? Where are you? She said, I'm in San Francisco. How did you find me? She said, I heard that you were speaking in Billings, Montana. I called all the hotels and motels, and there were only three. <laughs> so no. I found you. I said, oh, it's very sweet of you, and, and congratulations on your yeah, resourcefulness. Okay. I've got to go to work, and we finished our conversation. I finished, I finished unpacking heading for the door, the phone rang again. I said, hello. Oh, Mr. Nemo, this is so wonderful. You have no idea. I said, who are you? She said, my name is Mary. Mary, where are you calling me from? She said, Chicago. How did you find me? She said, Sally called me from San Francisco. <laughs> and, the network, and, the, and the net closes in. Okay. You know, in, in, in most ways, I'd love to be you. In some ways, I'd hate to be you. But there it is. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Give us what's happening. Yes, over the well, Leonard Nimoy is appearing at the London Movie Comic Media oh. Expo at the Excel Convention Center over in Royal Victoria <laughs> Dock this Saturday and Sunday, uh, also giving a live interactive talk on the main stage. Now, normal uh, entry tickets are available on the door. They're six pounds each, three pounds for children. Um, but you can also book a fast track ticket uh, using your credit oh. or debit card. And I'll give you a phone number and a website. The phone number is 020 8523 1074. Or very easily, just go onto the web, londonexpo.com. Doors open 10 a.m. Oh. All good, nothing bad. And I suspect Sally and Mary will be right there at the front of the queue, as ever. Uh, uh, just before we finish, uh, William Shatner, of course, Bill, as he's known around it, uh, made a new album last year. Any plans yourself to... Uh, yes, it's uh, very good, too. Yeah. Very good. But I made bad records long before he I, did. Do you know what? <laughs> the, the one, I, we, we know, and we sometimes play them. In your honor, we left off that. Thank you very much.